everyone. Um, today we are going to start our next topic, which is probability generating functions. Um, it is a year two statistics topic, so we're carrying on with statistics. Um, it's a year two topic, and normally I would be teaching this to you in the first couple of weeks of September. Um, but obviously we're a bit ahead because we didn't have um, we didn't have our exams, and so I thought I'd start teaching it to you now. Um, what that doesn't mean, though, is that I want you to be super chill about this and not do it, okay? Because um, it's quite a tricky topic. We've got quite a few tricky topics to do um, next year, obviously. Um, and so the quicker we do, the quicker we get through this, or the better we understand this now, the easier it will be next year. Um, our, ne our topic after this, which we won't be starting until September, will be complex numbers. And that is a really tricky topic, so it would be fantastic if we could have the whole of the first term focusing on that okay so it's really really important to me that you get your this sort of in the locker and you're happy with it okay um so it's called probability generating functions which we um abbreviate to pgs and all a probability generating function is is a mathematical function that stores details of a probability distribution okay it can only be used with discrete probabilities um so a discrete probability distribution that takes non-negative integer values okay so for example the binomial distribution or the Poisson distribution would be suitable distributions to include PGS. Okay. Now, every year that I've taught this, it's new, it was new to the um, A level when it when the A level changed a couple of years ago. Um, and I think the the biggest problem that students have is trying to understand what a PGF actually is. Okay. Um, but basically, all it is is if we have a probability mass function. And by a probability, that is a probability mass function, okay, the probability that x is equal to x. It's a way of writing a function for those probabilities, okay. Um, and so if you have a discrete random variable x, and that has got a probability mass function where the probability of x equals x, so you know all those probabilities, then the probability generating function... Um, is denoted by this g of x with respect to t. So this x is a little subscript, the x referring to this random variable x, okay, of t, we'll talk about what t means in a minute, is the sum of all of the probabilities, so each probability, times t to the power of what the variable that they are representing, okay? Now this t is a dummy variable. Now what that means is we could we could substitute in any value of t and it would work. It's like a placeholder, okay? So um, I've just tried to write a bit more about what a, a, um, a probability generating function is. So it gives, a, it gives a equation, if you like, or a power series that it represents the probability mass function, this p of x equals x, okay? Um, and it, it's used because you can just see then, see via an equation, what is happening with your probability mass function, okay? Now, this variable t, which we call a dummy variable, that is just like a placeholder so, uh, so that we've got something to raise to the power. And the power is the thing that's important because that is our value of x, Okay? Now that is my best explanation for it. <laughs> um, so come back again once you've done once you've done, gone through the whole video. Come back again and re-listen to what I've just said and see if it then makes a bit of sense. I'll send you all my notes on it as well so that you can um, so that you can read through those and that might help a bit. Okay. If all of the things I've just said sort of mean nothing to you, don't panic because we're going to do some examples and it'll become much clearer. Okay. So we're gonna. Um, I'm going to just show you sort of how it works, okay? So let's say I had a variable x, it could be any sort of variable, and x, I don't know, it might be the number of times I need to, um, no, I, the number of sixes I get when I roll a dice 20 times, okay, for example. Um, obviously, it's not going to be a proper dice. Um, and this is my table of results, so, um, oh, it must be a four-sided dice, it's got... Um, these on it. Anyway, so I the probability of it getting zero times is 0.2, probability one times is 0.3, probability two times 0.3, and the probability I throw it three, um, I get three sixes would be 0.6, 0.2. Okay. So this is saying I must only roll the dice three times, and the maximum number of sixes obviously I can therefore get is three if it was dice, for example, an uneven dice, uh, not an uneven, what's it called unfair. Anyway, 
So if this was the case, if this was my probability mass function, now this is what we would call a probability mass function because um, it gives us our probabilities that x equals x. That makes it a probability mass function. Okay. So if I keep talking about probability mass function, that is what I mean. I mean that table. Okay. Um, so if this is our probability mass function, then the probability generating function, i.e. the PGF, is given by uh, this equation down here, which I wrote on the um, last piece of paper on the other side. So it's the sum of each of the probabilities times by t to the power of x. Okay. So these x, this x mean, refers to these x's, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. And the p, the probability of x, is obviously these ones. Okay, so for the first one, we're going to do the probability of x is 0.2 times t to the power of 0. So 0.2 t to the 0. And then we're doing the sum of them. So we're plussing 0.3 is the probability times t to the power of our x is 1. Okay, so the t is just in that position so that we can raise it to the power. Okay, that's all that means. It's just a dummy placeholder. Okay, uh, and then plus because we're doing the sum of, so 0.3 t to the power of 2 and 0.2 t to the power of 3, okay? And then obviously you can just simplify that expression, t to the power of 0 is 1, so that just becomes 0.2, t to the power of 1 is just t, so this whole probability generating function, this PGF, becomes all of that, okay? And the reason we do that, so the whole idea of this, is so that that is now a function, a power series for this probability mass function, which we've just made up. Okay, it doesn't mean anything this probability mass function, it's just a made up one. So this is the PGF for that probability mass function. And the PGF is just like a, it's like a visual series of how the probabilities of this are going to be. Okay, now you will notice, of course, because we've got this t to the power of x, that your, um, your x is your variable, so x is the thing that goes in these your x position, okay, and your coefficients of t are your probabilities, okay, that is the very nature of a PGF, and that is what is important, okay, so if you were given this PGF, you would then be able to go backwards and produce this table in the same way, okay, in the same way that we just undid it, okay, now, what we will notice about this, so I'm saying that t is a dummy variable, it can be, it's just a placeholder, if you substitute 1, in as t, i.e. you do uh, g of x of 1, then obviously this would be 1, one t, if t is 1, 1 squared is 1, so this would be 1, this would be 1, this would be 1, so we'd have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2, which of course equals 1, okay, and that will always happen because that is the point, we've got a discrete discrete variable means we can only have certain outcomes, so because we can only have certain outcomes, that is always going to be the case, okay? So this is a very important piece of information that you need to be aware of, okay? It's a very important concept surrounding PGFs, okay? That the g of x of 1 equals 1. So if t is 1, the whole g of x of t is 1, okay? Really important. Um, and I'll just talk to you about this next little bit, but don't panic about it because we'll, we'll talk about it another time. Um, but if we need... Uh, we could also write our PGF in terms of the expectation. Now, don't forget, we've talked about expectations. We first did it when we looked at um, discrete random variables. Expectation could also be the mean, okay? Um, and it is given by our E of X, okay? That's what we mean. That's how we know it normally, okay? Um, but we could also we can say that these two things are equivalent. If we have um, a probability generating function, a PGF, we could also say that's the same as our expectation of t to the power of x, okay? Um, and that, that quote just means exactly the same thing here. And all that means is um, that, our, that that is going to give us the, our mean value, okay? Don't worry too much about that, just sort of go with it for now. Okay, um, and that's similar. How can I make that similar? If we did uh, e to the a of ax, you remember that's a lots of e to the x, yeah, which is similar to what we've done here. There's our sort of a to the x, if you like, and there it is there, okay? Um, right, so let's kick us off with an example. 
Um, here we go. So we've got that. Can we see that okay? X is a discrete random variable that denotes the absolute difference of the scores when two dice are thrown. Construct the probability distribution uh, of X and write the PGF. Okay. What do I mean by the absolute difference? I mean it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So if you're doing the score of one, take away the score of the other, you'd just take the positive version. Okay? So um, what I'm going to do here uh, to help us visualise it is I'm going to draw a sample space diagram. I don't even know if you can remember what sample space diagrams are. Um, but this is giving us all the possible outcomes. That's what a sample space diagram does. So if you think about a dice, um, or two dice that are being rolled, when they are rolled, obviously, they can only show their fair dice, we assume, because it hasn't said otherwise. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so these are the options. We can get what? roll one dice and get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Roll a second dice and get 1, 2, 5, 6. Then we're going to work out the differences. Now, the differences just doesn't, as I say, it doesn't matter which way around. So, obviously, the difference between 1 and 1 is 0. The difference between 2 and 1 is 1. The difference between 3 and 1 is 2. The difference between 4 and 1 is uh, 3. The difference between 5 and 1 is 4. 6 and 1 is 5, etc. Okay, and hopefully I don't need to go through the whole process. Obviously the diagonals will all be zero because they're not going to be different. And uh, then we can just go through. So that's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, one, two, three, uh, one, one. There we go. Okay, so those are our possible outcomes. Okay. Then I need to put this into a probability distribution. That is the same as saying write down the probability mass function. Okay, um, That is asking you to put it into a table. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if you don't have to draw this sample space diagram, then that's absolutely fine. Okay, Don't feel like you need to draw it just because I do. But I personally have to work out what's going on. Okay, um, I've just circled those so that we don't get confused. So we can either have our absolute differences can either be 0, 1, 2, three, four, or five. Oh, don't know why I've done the table quite so big, but there we go. And so the probability of each of those occurring, um, the probability of getting zero is one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of 36. Probability of getting one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten out of 36. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so eight over 36. And um, three over 36 is gonna be, no, Number three is one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of thirty-six, then four out of thirty-six, and then two out of thirty-six. Okay? That is our probability distribution done. There. Okay. Now we've got to do the PGF. So all we need ahead of us is that table. Okay, so a PGF by its nature is given by the sum of, don't forget that sign means the sum of, uh, the probability of x times t to the power of x. Okay, so what we've got here then from our table, I'm just going to read it off the table straight as it is so you can understand. So I've got the probability of x is 6 over 36, t to the power of 0, plus, because I'm adding them all up, 10 over 36, t to the power of 1, plus 8 over 36, t squared, plus 6 over 36, t cubed, plus 4 over 36, t to the 4, plus 2 over 36, t to the 5. Okay? And then we can simplify it. So, <laughs> um, I don't know if you'll enjoy this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's uh, let's do it step by step so that we know what I'm talking about. So obviously that's just 3 over 36. And, oh no, 3 over 18. I'm just going to simplify all of them slightly first so that they've all got the same denominator, but it's slightly simpler. Uh, you don't have to go through quite the same notion as I am, uh, like that. And then I would just take out, I'm thinking, okay, I've got to try and make this really tidy. I've got to make it look nice for my probability generating function. So I'm going to take out a factor of 118. So I've got 3 plus 5t plus 4t squared plus 3t cubed plus 2t to the 4 plus t to the 5. That is my probability generating function. Okay. And what that gives us is a, is a series function. It gives us a function that shows us this table that is the point in a probability generating function okay now you should be able to go from there back to this table as as easily as we've gone from the table to the pgf okay right 
question two, what are we doing for example two? Okay, example two is, here it is. So, um, the PGF of a discrete random variable x is given by gx of t is k lots of 1 plus t all squared. And we've got to find the value of k. Okay, so, um, what do we know about probability generating functions? Well, we know that all the probabilities in a discrete random variable, so the sum of p of x equals x, must equal 1. Okay, so that means if t is 1, we know that must be true. I quoted that on the, when, earlier on um, when I talked through all of this stuff. Here it is, the probability when t is 1, they add up to 1. And it's because our p of x, the sum of p of x has to be 1, okay? And our um, probabilities are the coefficients of t, okay? That makes sense. So when t is 1, they all have to add up to 1. That's why that happens. Okay, um, so I can just quote that and then use that here. So if I've got the g of x, the g of x is 1, I've got k lots of 1 plus 1 squared must all equal 1. Okay, so that means that I've got 4k must equal 1 because 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, and therefore k must equal a quarter. Okay, not complicated that bit. Right, and then it says write down the probability distribution of x. Fantastic. So what this is asking us to do is to go from a probability generating function and put it back into the table. So that's what I keep talking about. So now we know what k is, we can sort of think about what this means. Okay, so there's our um, PGF. Let's tidy it up so that we can actually understand what the hell is going on. And we're going to expand it, obviously. Uh, there it is. So, our PGF is a quarter um, plus, now actually when we're doing these, it's probably much easier to go in ascending order of power, okay? Because then what we're going to do when we write it as our uh, probability mass function, the coefficient of, um, not the coefficient, the power of t there is zero, the power of t there is one, and the power of t there is 2. Now don't forget, I'm talking about the powers of t because that is what a probability generating function is. It's t to the power of x. So the power refers to our x value. So here t hasn't got a power, so our x value is 0. Here t has got a power of 1, and so our x value is 1. And here t has got a power of 2, so our x value is 2. And our, don't forget that this is our coefficient of t. So these probabilities are our coefficients. So the probability of it being 0 is a quarter, probability of it being 1 is a half, and the probability of it being 2 is a quarter. Okay? And that is our probability distribution, that is our probability mass function. That is how we go from the PGF to the probability mass function. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you now to just try and get your head all around that and then have a go at exercise 7a in the uh, booklet. I'll be sending you and you'll have the work solutions as well. Okay, let me know if there's any problems.